reality. Uh, it's starting to record. Okay. In order to bring that artistic vision to us, and to the, our community, and frankly, beyond our borders to the world, you need an executive director like Marianne, just a remarkable, remarkable woman. <clears throat> she calls herself a television professional and nonprofit <laughs> manager with an affinity for art, nature, and people. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, the Elon Lael organization preserves and promotes uh, the art and legacy of Anne and James Hubble, which Marianne will explain to us. And I think most of us know it's just a one of a kind home art compound studio meeting place. Just absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. You may not know that Marianne has also been active in uh, producing a growing passion. And that program has received multiple Emmys. So in addition to that, Marianne does freelance television production for broadcast television with producing documentaries, news programs, features. So Marianne is a work of art all in herself. And <laughs> but today we're together to have her talk to us about um, the extraordinary jewel on our doorstep, the, the compound that over the decades, um, Anne and Jim Hubble have created. So Marianne, over to you and everyone else. Uh, if you're not muted, mute. And even if you can take your picture off the, um, uh, the video. So here we go, Marianne, over to you. All right, thank you, Carol. You're such a, uh, a kind lady to invite me and it's a pleasure to be here today to share um, the story of Alain Leal and James Hubble and his family and all that they've created here uh, in San Diego. I, uh, just a little bit to, of my background, how I know Jim is as a filmmaker. I had heard of him when I was a, a younger woman and his reputation, but was invited uh, back in, I guess it was around 2000 to do a, a film, a documentary, an updated documentary about him. He had had his first uh, uh, project filmed in 1989 called The Art and Vision of James Hubble. And I'm sure many of you, almost all of you have probably seen it, but I was invited to do an update. And so I got to meet him and follow him for about six months and uh, became friends with him. And you know, when, when you meet Jim and you become a friend, you never leave his circle. He's one of the kindest, most genuine, creative and amazingly creative human beings that I've met. Um, and so true to his, his, uh, his language, his voice, his vision as an, as an artist and architectural designer. Um, and so it's been such a wonderful opportunity to work with him. I've worked with him for the last 15 years as the executive director of his Lon Leal Foundation. So I'm gonna tell you about that property and a, a little bit about the story behind it. This presentation uh, should last about 30 minutes or so. And then uh, if, um, if you have questions, I'll answer those after, after we finish. I'm gonna show you a PowerPoint and then a small film that I did about him. So we'll start with the, with the PowerPoint. I'm going to turn it into a slideshow. I hope. <laughs> okay, is that filling your screen? Uh -huh. Can anyone give me feedback? Because it's it's not filling mine, but I hope it's filling yours. Are you seeing it? Can someone let me know that? Text me or something? No, I'm not yes. here. I'm not seeing it. You're not seeing it all. No, I see. It. I see it, but it's not filling my screen. Filling the screen. I, I all see right, it. give me a second here to get that. Uh, play from start. There we go. Okay. Uh -huh. So this this photograph was taken this week, just uh, back on Monday. A beautiful sunny day at Alon Leal. So um, this is uh, inside our uh, archive and art making room in the new Alon Leal Center. Um, and 
I just thought it was, you know, what a beautiful way to celebrate January. We don't usually <laughs> think of January as a, as a month of, of beauty, but when you're in Jim's world, there's so much stained glass and nature um, that every season has, you know, a, a special thing to share with us. So this is uh, another view of the Alon Lael Center. This is our new building that was created uh, over the last decade. Uh, it was done with many fundraising efforts and with the help of, of many people in our community. And uh, you can see it's got many beautiful features. Jim's amazing uh, architectural embellishments and design. Jim is the architectural designer. He's not an architect but he does design buildings. And so uh, this building is where we do our public programs and we're gonna visit this again later, but I just wanted to show you this, uh, this lovely space. So we're located in Julian, California. Uh, and this is, you can see on the bottom right hand side of your screen is, is where the compound is located. And that rising behind us is Vulcan Mountain. And Vulcan Mountain is a 13 mile a uh, granite ridge that runs from Julian out to Warner Springs. And it's um, the headwaters of two important rivers in San Diego, the San Diego River that opens and enters or empties into the ocean at Ocean Beach, as well as the San Diego River that empties into the ocean in Del Mar. And so that mountain, it overshadows James and Anne's home. And it was this, has been the source of much inspiration for Jim's work over the years. So I thought it would be kind of interesting for you to see where we, where we sit in relation to the natural world. It's such an inspiration for Jim. So Elan Lael is this really unique combination of architecture, art, nature and creativity. And uh, you can see this in these pictures here. There, the gate on the upper right side was actually created by James when he was in college at Cranbrook University, which is in Michigan. He actually studied sculpture there. He tried to get into the painting program, but it was full. And so they put him into the sculpture program. And as a result, we have a man who sees uh, many things in, in a sculptural way, including his architecture, which we call habitable sculpture. The bottom right uh, photograph is his studio, the main studio where the art is made. Uh, and on the left side, you're seeing, you know, a standard uh, design done out, done by an architect. Now that would not be Jim, that would be by a different architect who's done this. But then you're seeing Jim's uh, art, his ironwork, the scrolls and so forth that's being created in the property. So it is a, it's an incredibly active, creative space, which is uh, surrounded by nature and inspired and informed by nature. So here is the beginning of our story. Here's, here's our protagonist, James Hubble, with his lovely wife, Anne, on the eve of their wedding in 1958. This was the party they had the night before their wedding. The two of them were married. Well, actually, they met. Um, at, at Torrey Pines Beach a few years prior to this. Um, and uh, that Torrey Pines remains a very special place to the two of them. They still visit their families. They bring their family there for picnics. Uh, it's also, Torrey is also the name of their first son. So, um, but I just love this picture because we, I've known Jim obviously in the latter part of his life. And I look at this fresh faced kid and, you know, if he only knew what was ahead of him, what, what joy, what sorrow, what excitement, what creativity was ahead of him. Anne and Jim were both born on the East Coast and eventually migrated their way out West. They both came from families, uh, of, they're both children of divorce. And so when they decided to marry, they made a pact with one another that they would never fight. They wouldn't raise their voices to one another. And they have been able to, uh, to make that their reality, which is what gives the Lan Leal their home such, I think, has such a peaceful and tranquil sense about it because it, is the, it, is, it was such an important decision on their part on how to navigate their own lives. So, so much of Jim and Ann's personality is in their home. 
and has influenced so many of the artists who have moved through that space. So here's Jim, uh, a picture taken from the very first book that was written about him. He's walking on the 10 acres of property that he and Anne purchased when they, right after they were married. Um, it was 10 acres of chaparral and they had to um, blaze a path up to the space where their home was built, building the, the driveway, sinking the well, getting electricity uh, brought to the property. They were young, uh, they were in their 20s and this was the, an adventure. It was their decision that they wanted to build a home with their own hands and they wanted it to be infused by nature. So, uh, so they were thrilled to have this kind of opportunity to find their own space and develop it for their own purposes. Jim and Ann never borrowed any money as they built their property. Uh, they only built as they had money and a need for space. The property today consists of 14 structures and uh, each one with its own use, uh, some for the residences and the, some for art studios and galleries and the remaining for the purposes, the uses of the foundation and the public use of the space. So uh, a, a very uh, interesting approach to building and, what, and, and the fact that the, the property has been developed over 60 years uh, of time and, and as such, it's really become a wonderful uh, timeline of Jim's uh, development as an artist and an architectural designer and, and we see some you'll see some things in the architecture of the different buildings um, as his style is evolving and some of the other projects he might have been working on in his career at the time he added structures to his home. So this is the very first building that Jim built. It is, was Jim and Ann's home for five years. It's about 300 square feet. And uh, you can see that it's made of stone and brick and uh, plaster is covering adobe. And then there's cedar that was milled in Julian. So that all that stone and stone was lifted up off the ground. That's what litters that the top of the mountain on which they live. Uh, so Jim, Jim was sourcing all of his materials locally and building this by hand. In this little 300 square foot uh, space, Jim and Ann lived for five years and, and had two children while they were living here. Um, today, this is Jim's private art studio, where you can see his, his tools and some of his work on the desk there. This is another view, the opposite side of the room. So it's very beautiful, cozy, everything is natural. We've got, again, the cedar wood is uh, used to make the furnishing. The furnishings, it's heated with, with um, wood in that, uh, in that fire, um, in that stove. And, you know, if, if you can notice on the far left side of the screen, there's a closet door and so you see those handles. Those are pieces of manzanita burl that have been polished and shaped. So, so Jim is using uh, materials he's finding around on the ground to build and embellish his, this beautiful surroundings. There was, uh, while, while Jim and Ann lived here, there's a patio, there's a little uh, covered porch outside this door that we're looking at. And it was there that the stove and the washing machine were located and, and Ann has great memories of cooking outside and doing laundry outside. Um, year round with her winter coat on sometimes. And so again, they were young, they were in their twenties and this was a huge adventure for them. So for the rest of us, it sounds like a nightmare, but for them, um, it was everything they wanted it to be. Here's a picture of the young family, uh, Jim and Anne and three of their four sons. I'm not sure that the fourth son might not have been born yet, um, or maybe he was taking a nap, I'm not sure. But, but here is Anne, opposing with her harp. Anne is an artist in her own right. Her art tends to be more towards uh, music and dance, and she's led folk dancing in Julian for many years. She's an accomplished pianist and, and harpist. Uh, and so in their, their agreement as a couple was that Jim would design the architecture of the buildings and she would do all the in interior embellishments. So they made a, a great couple. 
as we're about to see in some of the interior shots of their residences. That, this is that same room. We were just looking back at, at Jim and Ann in the black and white. Here it is in color. This picture taken just last year. This is their living room. Um, you, again, it's, it's, it's an L-shaped building. So we're looking at the living room around the corner of the fireplace and to the right is a kitchen. And this, this design was inspired by Bruce Richards, an architect who practiced in San Diego. And I, in fact, believe Carol Child's home was also designed by Bruce Richards. Um, Bruce did, believed in, uh, in very comfortable living. His, his uh, design uh, voice had involved bringing nature in. So he has floor to ceiling windows and you know, views of nature. And then, of course, adding Jim's, um, you know, tools uh, or the materials that were available to Jim, those rocks at the fireplace that were pulled up off the property. The cedar, once again, Melda Julian uh, behind the plaster walls as adobe brick fired in Escondido. So, so Jim is building sustainably um, long before sustainability was even something that all of us talked about. The, de, the furnishings inside have been designed by Jim, though they were actually built by an artist named Del Cover, who works in San Diego. Uh, you can see Anne's harp in the lower left-hand corner, Jim's glass in the window, and some of the paintings on the wall are from James's uh, uh, grandfather, who was an art dealer in Kansas City, Missouri. So uh, some of those heirlooms came down from the family. I'm, I'm sure many of you know about um, the Cedar Fire and, and the damage that that brought to Alain Lael. This was one of the structures that was destroyed and put back together. So it was re we were able to receive a re-roofing permit. So none of the architectural structure has changed, but, but the artwork in here, the furnishings are all new. They were new as of 20, 2005 or so. This was Jim and Ann's living room. If you uh, came in, this is where you will meet them, uh, where they, you know, their, their main living space as a couple. Uh, this is a view from the pool. You can see the beautiful mosaic tile on the bottom. But before we talk about the pool, behind it, you see that round building, and that is Jim and Ann's master bedroom. That was, that building was built after the living room kitchen. And uh, it was the first time that James was started to experiment in his design style. So this is 1965. The living room kitchen was done in 62. This is 1965. And uh, you see tile and mosaics on the roof. And again, we're seeing the same materials of cedar, uh, tile, wood, um, all those things that were easily accessible and affordable, yet he's finding a new way to express himself. That bedroom was for the entire family. If you can imagine, there was a wall running uh, about halfway through it. And Jim and Ann had a bed that, that was against the wall on one side. And on the other side, there were bunk beds for the four little boys. And, uh, so, and there was a, a bathroom in that space as well. So, so that the family shared that space as a bedroom for about... I don't know, eight to 10 years until the older boys started to be teenagers and, and, just, and were more interested in a space of their own. But before they built that, and we're gonna get to the boys' house in a moment, the, the discussion was had as a family if the boys would like to have a bedroom of their own or a pool or a tennis court. And of course, four little boys decided they would like a pool. So Jim built them a pool and that's what we're looking at here. The pool is about five feet deep, was dug by hand, believe it or not. Um, all the footings on Jim and Ann's buildings of this original residential property were dug by hand. They never brought in any heavy equipment. It was just done with a shovel. They did not move any large boulders. They did not move any trees. They built everything around the natural features and that was their intention. Again, they wanted to have nature uh, be a driving influence in their lives. Um, this this uh, master bedroom is not connected to the living room and kitchen. You have to go outside from one building to get to the other. And again, that was intentional. So so Jim and Ann have, have great stories of the, you know, seeing shooting stars or rainbows 
or going to bed in a snowstorm or a rainstorm, thunder and lightning, or seeing animals. I mean, the you know, it's endless there of, of the opportunity when you don't aren't inside all the time of what you might encounter when you're you're more connected with nature. This uh, the mosaic design on the pool bottom is something sim that Jim did for many clients. Uh, he made uh, for many years his main source of, of income. The pra his practice at Hubble Studios was architectural embellishments for homeowners. He worked with his son Drew. His second son Drew uh, Hubble has an architecture practice in San Diego called Hubble and Hubble. And for those clients who wanted uh, James Hubble art, he would create mosaic bathrooms, doors, uh, railings, fireplace surrounds, gates any number of things that would take a home to another level in terms of decorative embellishment. So the pool was built, the boys were growing and they decided they wanted a bedroom. And so Jim built them one. This is the boys house. Uh, this picture was taken last year with the beautiful fog behind it. So it makes it really brings this dramatic uh, art uh, alive here. The photograph was taken by architectural photographer John Durant, who is uh, here in San Diego and has done a lot of work with us uh, photographing Alain Lael. And you can see this amazing, crazy, beautiful design. Jim, as a child, uh, his mother was a bit restless. So, you know, I mentioned to you that his grandfather was an art dealer in Kansas City, Missouri. He and his wife both succumbed in 1919 to the flu pandemic, leaving Jim's mother an orphan. And she went to live with relatives. Apparently it wasn't, a, 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 she didn't look back on it as a happy experience and, and spent most of her adult life, Jim says, looking for a replacement to the family she lost as a child. So she, she ended up marrying five times she had some money because of the she inherited money from her parents. Uh, so she had some freedom to um, reinvent herself several times, but uh, she moved Jim and his two siblings around quite a bit. And Jim talks about going to 12 schools in 13 years and never really having a, a solid home, uh, you know, one place to call home. Um, when Jim was 18, he, uh, he, well, he, he did have, but because the family had some resources, he had a very good education. He attended uh, uh, Whitney Art School. He did finishing school at Choate back on the East Coast. So he had a, a good education, although he wasn't a good student. He probably would have been diagnosed as dyslexic uh, if in today's um, vernacular. And, um, and so he really struggled in getting good grades. But but his, his instructors recognized he was bright and he was capable. And, and so they helped him get through school and encouraged him you know, to continue with his art. He started making art as a, as a young boy and his, his childhood drawings look like most of our kids' drawings, to be honest. He doesn't show any great potential as a child other than he just loves art and it's, a, it's something that he enjoys doing. Uh, obviously, he gets more accomplished as he grows up. And uh, when he was a young man, he, at 18, he traveled in Europe and Africa for a couple of years, just bummed around, you know, enjoying uh, taking in the sights and seeing the art and living amazing experiences that he wrote about in a book he just released last year called Seeking Beauty, um, and which is uh, available from our foundation if you're interested in getting a copy. And that book is all about um, the formative years of his life that created the artist that he is today. Uh, when he came back from that sojourn, he was drafted into the Korean War and he spent uh, a year and a half in the service. They recognized that he was not made of soldier material so he was the base graphic artist and he was, he made signs and painted murals and uh, he never uh, wielded a gun and, and that sort of thing. Although he was trained to, he never had to. And he was quite grateful for that. When he came back is when he, he met Anne in San Diego, his mother had settled in Rancho Santa Fe and bought a property called the Wishing Well Motel. 
Um, and so uh, um, that's how Jim came to be in San Diego and launched his career as an artist here. But that's, uh, that's going back in time now, we're up to 1970, that's when the Boys House was built. It took, Jim says it took him 10 years to complete this building. And I think what he means is that there's so much ornate decor on the inside and the outside that um, that's why, you know, he, he was doing it over time. Uh, you can see the beautiful stained glass windows here, the door, the carved door, the steps. Um, it's just a beautiful space in every possible way. I'm gonna go back one here. There we go. Here's a couple of shots of, of interiors. Did I skip one? Yeah, there's a there's a, one of the bedrooms and stained glass. You can see, again, we're talking about adobe and concrete plaster. We've got stained glass and colored, colored glass. Um, it's one of the beds here. There are two bedroom spaces. The boys were actually old enough to help with the construction of this, uh, this space. Um, the boy who is uh, Drew, who was the architect, was 16 at the time, and he he participated in, in helping to get the structure up. Um, the younger boys were Lauren. He was the third son, was, was 12 or 13, and he helped with some of the tile that was done on the floor. And the youngest son, Brennan, um, was seven or eight, and pictures of him show him climbing on the structure when he was a little kid like a monkey. Um, the oldest son, Tori, was already off at college. So, um, so they all had a hand in helping the construction and, and, and you know, helping the design, helping dad choose how to design the space. Here's a, a shot of, the, of a living room space. You can see some of the antique furnishings that uh, on the left that were from uh, Jim's uh, grandfather that he inherited from his mother. On the right is a shot of the beautiful bathroom with the abalone shells that cascade down into the tub and the, and the gorgeous uh, stained glass canopy over the bathroom space. This building survived the fire. Uh, the only damage was to that stained glass when a, a limb from an outside tree broke, fell out, you know, burned off a tree and broke through. So that glass is, is replaced from the original glass. But other than that, this building stayed intact and uh, Jim and Ann were able to live in the boys' house for three and a half years while they reconstructed their own residences in the big studio. Here's a couple of shots of some of the outside, close-ups of the outside uh, embellishments of the woman who's bursting through the roof with her, with her hands over her head. Um, there's a lot of female um, uh, uh, imagery uh, in, in, in clay around the boys' house. Jim was working in clay at that time. He had a commission with the San Diego Mission de Alcala to do the, um, the statues that you see when of the saints as you enter that space. They're all done in clay and as well as the Virgin of Guadalupe and Father Sarah, all done in clay and done by James. So if you visit, ever visit the mission, when you look at those, that's, those are some of Jim's work and he was working in that medium and, and, and enjoying it. And so you see a lot of that and, on the boy's house. And here's just another beautiful shot of, of the views from up there um, as, as we finish our, our tour of the family's residences. Um, this is a rock rose in bloom in the spring with some white ceanothus. It's kind of a blurry, but the ceanothus are in bloom behind it with the, with the mountains off in the distance. So again, nature is a huge inspiration. Um, the residences for the family are comprised of four buildings plus the pool. And then uh, a little bit lower down the hill come the art studios. Uh, this is the drafting studio. And I'm taking this, this is a vantage point facing northeast, uh, no, sorry, northwest, no. Yeah, north, northwest. <laughs> I, I like this because it looks like a wishbone. Um, and this whole building has, has kind of the, the feeling of, of bones, like bleached bones that Jim might've encountered as he walked through the fields around his home. Um, this is this stu drafting studio is treated as a clean studio. It's where art goes when you know some of the more delicate art that that doesn't want to be you don't want to expose to the grime of the big studio, or where they might take um, a piece to be finished and polished before it goes to a client. 
It also serves as a meeting space uh, and lunchroom and an office space for Jim and the staff. And this is another view of this building from the opposite uh, side. And again, you can see those bones that look like, like a whale's or a dolphin, you know, um, skeleton on the top. There's a lot of imagery or a lot of um, embedded shells and, and things and shells are a huge inspiration. The ocean is a big inspiration for Jim. And it's one of the ways he connects, you know, the way the ocean and the mountains are actually connected. He likes to bring that out for people and remind them of that, that while they're 60 miles apart there, they are connected by the watershed, by the rivers that are headwatered there and then empty into the ocean. This is the big studio, another view of that. We saw this earlier. This is where the, where the artist made the, 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 uh, the forge is inside there. The stained glass studio is inside there. Of course, it's an amazing architectural uh, uh, accomplishment built in 1967. And James was very thrilled to have an indoor space that was about 10 years after moving onto the property. He finally had an indoor space where he could make his art. I'm sure it was quite ready for that. Um, he uh, tells us that he could not have, um, a co he couldn't build this now, that uh, building codes are such that they probably wouldn't have allowed all of this that he created. But at the time, uh, it was, it was um, you know, uh, permitted. In fact, all the buildings on the property are permitted. Uh, he worked with a fellow named Dan Cole, who was an architect and who also worked for the city of San Diego to help get the permits through. Because as you can imagine, there was a lot of head scratching and you know, questions about what exactly was he doing and how was this building going to stand up? So. This is the Kiva Gallery, which is uh, right adjacent to the big studio. And Jim added this later on after he built the big studio because he felt that it was lonely there hanging off the side of the hill and needed a companion. That Kiva Gallery is an art display space now. We have a lot of Jim sculptures there. Um, it's, uh, it was called a Kiva Gallery because it's kind of buried in the ground a little bit. It's a bit underground. And, um, and so that's part of, uh, relates to the, the Hopi's Kiva origin story. A Kiva is a meeting space that the Hopi's uh, use. And it's also the Hopi, oh, sorry about this, let me quiet that. Hopi, the Hopi um, uh, believe, uh, legend, origin story is that life comes out of the center of the earth. So their Kivas are sunken into the earth to make them, get them closer to, to where life comes from. And so this, that is the same here. You can see the tile on the roof is a Tecate tile from Tecate, Mexico. Jim uh, has done a lot of work in Mexico. And so was familiar with where to source that tile and the, and the bricks as well that come from Mexico, the red bricks. And then of course the adobe tile, the cedar and all those things that he's, he's using so frequently in his other spaces. Uh, on the other side, the newer buildings are on the other side of the driveway. This is the, this is the chapel, the, the quiet space or chapel. Jim started it before the Cedar Flyer. He had just the rebar um, up uh, on that structure, but then the fire happened. And so he was you know, working on rebuilding other, the other more important buildings for several years. Got back to this about 2009. So it's a beautiful, little outdoor space that looks out over the mountains that towards the west towards the ocean um, and uh, is, uh, was done by vol with volunteer labor to build the structure and then by the Hubble Studio artists to do the art and stained glass that's on the inside. I got ahead of myself. We're back to, now we're back over, the, that chapel is right near the center. Again, we're back at the Alam Leal Center, which is where our, um, where our programs happen at Alam Leal. We've, we were quiet in 2020, like everybody was the first year of the pandemic, but last year we were um, really happy to be able to uh, start bringing people back to the property. Uh, we started with tours and, uh, and workshops and classes. So we, um, we are now offering smaller private tours that take you around 
the property and tell you the story of the family and show you all these spaces in person. And then in this center, we're also offering workshops and art classes. And, uh, and when we can, we like to get together and folk dance. And in this picture, you can see Anne is leading folk dance as she's the little short one over there underneath the fire. Fire looks like it's coming off her head there, but that's her. And then Jim is watching to the left with the blue shirt sitting down. And uh, these are some of the neighbors and some of the workers of Alain Leal. We're dancing for the photographer, John Durant, but um, we, do, uh, we do folk dancing. We try to do it a few times, several times a year, um, as often as um, circumstances warrant it. Uh, this is another view of that courtyard. You can see the steps um, and the space. And so that acts as an amphitheater. We've done performances in this space and that's a comfortable place for people to sit and watch performances or just, just to relax and enjoy the surroundings. This is inside our, our office uh, kitchen space. Um, you can see the, uh, again, all that beautiful. We're, we're using the same materials, echoing earlier construction with cedar that is milled and julienne. Um, but you can see on that backdrop, you can see some beautiful mosaics, uh, especially on the wall and the far back. Uh, on, the, on the cabinet there to the left, you see we've won an orchid from the San Diego Architectural Foundation. This building received an orchid for its um, design. We're really, really happy about that. Um, here's our meeting space, a second room uh, that is uh, where we host meetings and classes and that sort of thing. And it is available for public use. And again, you see Jim's inspiration, his art, his stained glass windows, all uh, rugs on the floor that are, were woven from watercolors that he painted. So everything on this property is designed by Jim. It is Jim's art. We, we do not show any other artists or feature their work. As aside from those pieces that his fam that were family inheritances. So it's pretty amazing how prolific James is as an artist and designer. Now, just in saying that, he did not make every single thing. He designed it all, but he has a, a team of artists who work with him. There's three, three staff artists, one in, one in metal, one in mosaic, one in stained glass. And so, uh, and oh, I should say a fourth one, we just added a woodworker, a full-time woodworker uh, a few years ago. So those folks are, are here executing all of James's um, designs. This, Jim and Ann are now 90, so he's not quite able to do everything as he used to. Here's a, that mosaic design I was showing you that we were looking at the kitchen area. Um, that's just one small portion, but you can see how beautiful and colorful that design is. That's on the ceiling of the, of the washroom. And I said to Jim, why put it there? We'll never get these people out of the bathroom. But, you know, <laughs> I guess it was, an, it was a palette that he felt needed to be filled. So when you come to Alain Leal, as you can see, we, as I mentioned, there are classes. We do classes in the garden in the art spaces, we have, you know, we do uh, all sorts of different things. We have meetings and retreats. Uh, we work in mosaics. So there's lots of opportunities to learn and experience nature in our space. And just another, another chance, another group dancing. Uh, on the bottom left is the children from um, our close by one room schoolhouse. And Wynola, the, um, which uh, those kids came, had it, performed a play in our amphitheater and their parents came to watch. Uh, so we do make our space available for performances from, the, from schools to professionals as well. The right side is showing our meeting space set up for an event. So you, we, you can see how beautiful the room can be transformed to, uh, for, for many different uses. And we do employ the entire property for, for events. This, this particular folk dancing event is happening up by Jim's first house. So, so the whole property is put into work um, for activities there. And the final slide for this part is um, our boss. There he is. Uh, at 90 and uh, 
as many of you may or you may or may not know that Jim and Ann are, are no longer living at Alam Lael full time. Uh, Jim's had Parkinson's for the uh, for the last 10 years. And so navigating that property and all of its uh, you know, buildings and the 10 acres on which it's situated just became a little much for him. He didn't feel safe moving around in the space. So he and Ann have moved to Frederica Manor, which is uh, the Chula Vista campus. And they still come up and visit us uh, every other week. And Jim is still actively uh, programming the studio staff and keeping nine of us who work on the property busy, including myself. Um, and he and I are now working together on a couple of projects. I'm working on a book about Alain Leal, uh, and he's, you know, in collaboration with James about the property and how it was built and, and how the family lived there. Uh, and it'll be a coffee table style book that uh, will be heavy on, on imagery, on pictures with, with some of explanation of the family's life there and Jim's, you know, development as an artist. Um, that we hope that book will be published, uh, be able to be published later this year. And then now we're, we just uh, have found out this week that we're doing a new exhibition in Los Angeles in April of this year. It's opening at Helms Bakery, which is the design center in Culver City. And uh, it'll be a, a, a feature about James and uh, his work, and it'll be heavy on his architectural embellishments, things like doors and stained glass windows and those things that he became so well known for over the years in designing for uh, interior spaces, because Helms Bakery is a design center. It is populated by architects and artists and, and retail spaces that sell furniture and rugs and um, you know, fixtures, you know, bathroom fixtures and such, so forth. So uh, we're going to be uh, showing some of Jim's handmade uh, individual pieces that might be included in, in a space, uh, in a home space, or res uh, even a, a, a restaurant or public space. Okay, so that's the end of my slideshow. Let me, let me give a, uh, what I, what I was hoping to do now is to share with you a quick video. Um, this is a, a piece that we created for Oceanside Museum of Art. Uh, for Jim, they had, a, had an, a, a show there in 2020. I'm sorry, 2018, pardon me. I'm trying to get this to get big. Hold on, let me try this again. Uh, so he, um, it, it was called Seeking Beauty, and it was a, a bit of a retrospective. And at that time, I was um, beginning to put together the 2019 documentary called Between Heaven and Earth that aired on KPBS and, and had a pretty successful film festival run. And uh, at the time when I first started, I was focused mainly on Jim as, uh, you know, his work in churches. and and the sacred nature of what his, his work feels like, felt like to me, you know, when you go to, I mentioned when you go to Alain Lael, it's very tranquil, it's very beautiful. Um, and, uh, and, and that that's an intentional, you know, result of the way Jim works. And so uh, I started exploring the work he had done in churches, and I'm, I'm going to share this with you. There's a, you know, it, it has features a few of the of the well-known spaces that Jim's worked in. And it includes also St. James, which is in your hometown of Solana Beach. So uh, this is a little six and a half minute video that I'm gonna call, share called, uh, called, it's called the Oceanside Trailer, but it's really about sacred spaces. Thank you. 
I think my life is really about maybe bridging things, but it's also just about making things. Jim doesn't mimic nature. He doesn't copy nature, but he's informed by nature. I think God is a great artist. And there are places in the world where I am struck by that. I also think there's something divine inside of us. I think James Hubble responds to that beauty in nature with that treasure inside of him. I don't think you have to know where you're going, but I think you have to set a direction towards something. Hopefully it's big enough so it'll last your whole life and even after. I think Sea Ranch is the building that people know Jim Hubble for. He's unconventional because he's just following his own path. And I think that makes him uh, strong in his artistic vision. There's healing peace in that art. There's healing power in that art. I think it's because he has such respect for the human and the divine and for nature. It's like Jim, it's both unassuming and powerful. We um, love the chapel. We absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, I've been bringing my daughter since she was born here, and it just seems to feed her soul. It's so pure. I mean, it's what you created. So thank you for the gift you give our world. Did you build things when you were young? Uh, I couldn't stop sighing. <laughs> you can see the progression of an artist and a craftsman and an architect and a builder and a human. When you start a job, you're looking for clues as to, so it's almost like a mystery. What, what's this thing about? It seemed easier to kind of get people to fall in love with the Pacific than to fall in love with the universe. This idea of the Pearl of the Pacific it would take seven lifetimes to do what he can see. The Pacific can hold us together in a non-political non way, but just in a human way. I think we have to celebrate individual or sort of different, that we're not all the same, we need each one of us to make it work. Ilan Lael would not be were it not for the love between James and Anne because it's their home. It's where 
their boys lived. And that rootedness in human love is probably what makes it sacred. That mundane human love, it's what can catapult us to the divine. Okay, I'm going to stop the share now. That that is the end of my presentation. But to follow up on that film, so you saw, <clears throat> you saw uh, Sea Ranch Chapel, uh, All Souls Church in Point Loma, which is an absolutely stunning uh, piece of work by James, um, and then uh, St. James and Solana Beach, the Sea Ranch Chapel in Sea Ranch, which is open to the public. If you were ever traveling north of San Francisco on the one, uh, it's a, you can uh, reach that. And then of course, Alain Lael. So um, he, is, he is a, as you can tell, I have great admiration and love for the man. He's a incredible talent and a very special human being. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm happy to take your questions if you have any. Marianne, I just want to say that this was an exceptional tour. Thank you so much. It was just fabulous. You brought it alive. I mean, I, I have been there and I think many of us have been, but how you explained and wrapped the beautiful family history around it, just a, a fabulous presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to tell it. He's, he's such a great guy. It's such a, such a wonderful story and a beautiful place. And I hope that you guys you all will consider coming to visit us. Uh, you might want to come and bring a group and use the space. It's, uh, you know, we are there as a public resource. So keep us, keep us in mind, we're not that far away. <laughs> and Marianne, I know that you are a foundation. And so if people are thinking about uh, donations during the year to, you know, a, a local artistic, uh, uh, treasure, which the, the Hubble compound, Elon Lael, is, where would they write? Where would they um, contact you, make a donation, et cetera, et cetera? Sure. We have a, a terrific website at that elanlaelfoundation.org, which you'll never be able to spell, but, <laughs> uh, but it is, uh, there's our name, and I can, I can provide that to you, Carol, or to however you communicate with your group. Okay, um, why, don't, why don't you uh, slowly spell it right now spell. with the dash okay. if it's needed? All right, uh, no dash needed. It is uh, I L A N L. A E L, Elan Leal Foundation, all spelled out, all one word, no spaces. Elan Leal Foundation dot org. I forget. I think I'm giving you an email address. I'm giving you a website. <laughs> um, and it's a terrific. Uh, we have so much information on there about Jim, about our activities about where you can see his work uh, besides the Ron Leal. And it's where we communicate with the, with the community throughout the year. You, we, we have donation links. We have a way for you to sign up for our emails or our newsletter. Um, and uh, you know we have, we have over about 7,500 members so far. Uh, we're looking to expand and looking to grow. Um, you know, for many years, we. We kept our activities at Alon Lael were kept to a to a minimum because Jim and it was Jim and Ann's home and they didn't want to live in a public space. But now that they have are not there living permanently, um, we have the opportunity to do much more. And so we are taking advantage of that. We have a tour season in the spring and in the fall. We're, we're opening up four dates in May, two dates in May, two in June. And two dates, but I'm sorry, is it four? Yeah, four. And it, then there's a, a morning and an afternoon tour on each of those days. So uh, we have uh, a total of 16 tour opportunities 
in the spring, which is by far the best season to come. <laughs> it's beautiful in the Etalon Leon in the spring when the, when the all everything is in bloom um, and the grass is green and all that. And the mountains are just, you know, just gleaming with, with light or teeming with light and gleaming with the beauty flowers and so forth. And then we do it again in the fall when everybody wants to come and have apple pie and see the leaves <laughs> turning. And we have that too. That happens. I think we start at the end of September with a date and then two dates in October and one in early November. Um, two different times of year, but they each have their own beauty and attract, uh, allure. So, and then of course, uh, classes and workshops are happening ongoing. And uh, we will be having uh, another, an event later in the summer. What we did a harvest moon dinner last, this past year, which was really fun. We saw the sun setting while the moon was rising. And we had a beautiful dinner and music uh, to enjoy that kind of very special moment. So um, that was that was great. Um, a, a couple of things that, that I'd like you to know about. We sponsor a really important program called Healing the Healers, that uh, where we invite COVID healthcare workers to come to Alon Leal for a day of rest and rejuvenation. Um, and that is uh, ongoing. We ho are hosting 11 of those events this year. And so if you have someone in your life that is a doctor, a nurse, a respiratory therapist, a janitor, a, a primary physician, you know, we've, we've had them all. We've had call center people, anyone whose life is working in the medical field and whose life has been affected by COVID, which is everybody, um, there they can come and, and uh, at no charge to them and spend a day with us. We, the groups are about 20 in size. We keep them small and COVID compliant. The day involves, uh, they have some opportunity to meet with a counselor as a group and kind of talk a little bit about what they're going through. We have art activity. Uh, we have lots of time in nature. Um, you know, uh, it, it, I really, we understand they, they spend a lot of time in, inside a building, up, you know, completely nature deprived. So it's the absolute opposite of that. We give them lunch and, and time to relax and just sit in the sun, whatever it is they might want to do. Uh, and so uh, it, we ask the public, we ask, ask the community to help us support the program. It costs $40 to support one, uh, one person to attend or 800 for an entire class. And um, so the, the ability to support that is also on our website. And we're going to be entering, it looks like entering a new, um, a new uh, program this year with the Watershed Coalition, which is a group of environmental nonprofits, the San Diego River Conservancy, the San Diego, uh, the San Diego Architectural Ar Archaeology, uh, Archaeology Center in San, um, in outside of Escondido with Vulcan Mountain Foundation. Uh, this is a group of environmentally focused organizations that are opening, that are doing watershed education for students. And they've invited us to be part of that. Um, we'll be the art component of that. And because we live in the shadow of Vulcan Mountain where the watershed begins, it's a perfect blend of, of natural world and, and environmental importance as well as art. <clears throat> And so we're really thrilled about that. And we're going to be uh, fundraising in the same way we do the Healing the Healers, where uh, we're, we're going to allow people to sponsor a student or sponsor a class. So that more information will be coming out about that uh, in a couple of months. But that's something new, brand new, that just is happening this month and we're really excited about. Wonderful. Does anyone have um, a question in the next? a couple of minutes before we let uh, Marianne thank her and let her uh, continue with her work. <laughs> if not, Marianne, again, thank you so much for a very, very enjoyable, informative uh, walk through the Hubble's beautiful compound and for all you are doing both here in this area, San Diego, bridging into countries all around the world. It's really, really inspirational. Well, thank you. And thanks for your interest and come see us soon. <laughs>
Thanks everybody for attending.